assalamu alaikum everyone welcome back to asp.mvc tutorials today i'm going to tell you one of the most commonly appearing problem in mvc asp.net database first approach that is the code regeneration or the model regeneration when you are going to update your entity framework edmx file basically what will uh, what is happening uh, when you have applied annotations on your database first approach models uh, within your asp.mvc application the model uh, is running perfectly but when you do some changes inside your edmx file inside your entity framework file uh, the model that you have generated automatically the code will be regenerated again and again so all your annotations are going to be vanished from uh, from very scratch and your all the models will be resetted when you do refresh uh, on your entity framework file okay so let me show you how can you resolve this and how can you retain your annotations when you are working with database first approach and when you are refreshing your model every time so how to avoid uh, losing your annotations let me show you let's start okay so i'm going to create a new project that is the uh, empty mvc application you can rename it any name okay and for the purpose of this example i'm going to create an empty mvc application so empty and mvc uh, do remove this check because we are not going to host in the cloud and then click okay Meanwhile, the application is creating. Let me show you the database that I have already created with the name example DB. This is my SQL server and this is object explorer. And within this example DB database, I have a customer's table. I am expecting from you people that uh, you already know how to create a database and how to create a table within a database. And these are the columns along with their data types. This is my primary key column and it is identity column as well. So I don't need to insert in this column. So this is a short brief introduction about the database that I have and the table that I have. Now I'm going to uh, move this table on my ASP.NET-MVC application along uh, with the help of the entity framework so that I can be able to generate the insert, update, delete and select views along with the controller. Okay, so uh, let's start in Visual Studio. All right, here I have my application created. What I have to do first, I have to add uh, the entity framework file by right clicking on my application and then go to the add button and here you can click on new item guys this is the same step these are the same steps that we, i have done in the database first approach video so you can refer to that video as well but i'm doing it again in uh, in order to let you understand more accurately so entity when you write entity here you see adio.net entity data model uh, rename it whatever what uh, name you wanted to apply and then click okay all right, because I'm going to demonstrate database first approach, so I'm selecting the first option and click next. And of course, because this is a new application, so I have to create a new connection. For new connection, I have the database uh, in my SQL server. If you have a separate database file, you can select always this option. Otherwise, if you have SQL server standalone server installed in your PC or on the network, you can select this option. Okay, so continue. Now it asks me my server name, so let us go on SQL and then click on the connect uh, button and now copy this server name that I have here, okay? And now let's continue here. Paste it, use SQL Server Authentication because I'm going to use this. If you are connecting your SQL Server with Windows Authentication, you can use the above option. Then the password that you must provide and now select your database that is example DB, and then click on the test connection. If everything goes well, the test connection gets succeeded and then click okay. After this, it asks you to please save the connection string in the web.config file and yes, include the sensitive information that is the password and then click next. And of course, we are going to use the sixth uh, free, uh, entity framework version six in this case. Now it, it is retrieving the, all the contents or all the objects of my database at this particular point. So recent, right now I have only one table that is the customers table, okay. Similarly, if you have multiple tables, you can select both of them. If you have procedures, you can select procedures and views as well. Click finish. These are the previous steps that we have seen in the database first approach. Okay, so it shows me a warning message. So ignore it and then sh uh, click on the do not show this message again and then click okay. All right guys, so you can see now my table that I have created inside my database is successfully converted into a class. We can say it a model here inside our uh, entity framework. Uh, model that is dot, dot edmx file now what we have to do we have simply have to build our project first and then we have to create controller and the respective views uh, using the entity framework so let us build this first build solution 
build succeeded successfully guys now um, let us right click on the controllers and add and controller and then click on the MVC 5 controller with views using entity framework and then click add why I have opted this option because I wanted to generate my controller and my views automatically along with this with the help of this customer model and the data context class I hope you have under you you already know that what is the data context class uh, if you do not know see the uh, database first approach and the code first approach tutorials on my MVC playlist in my MVC playlist okay generate views automatically use reference the script libraries that is jQueries and layout page is automatically added click add simple the scaffolding means it, it's a feature that automatically creates the views and the controllers based on the model that you have provided to it okay all right guys so you can see my controller is created automatically along with all the views with create and delete and details and added and index now uh, it's time to rename uh, or apply some annotations on the model that we have right now this is my model customer.cs and here let me write a simple model or annotation you can say that is display round brackets by default it is not appearing in the list but press control dot and you can see the namespace has appeared and here is specified name equals to and the name that you wish to display and here you can write customer and the next annotation that you're going to apply here uh, is required and furthermore annotations you wish to add you can so right now for the purpose of this tutorial I'm only adding two annotations customer phone and here I'm using password so guys these are the efforts but when you refresh your model that is this one all these annotations will be deleted by default with this model so in, uh, this tutorial helps you to pertain your uh, annotations when you refresh your model okay so this is password let us apply a data type here data type keyword that is this one annotation and here you can specify data type dot password okay so all these are your manual efforts now uh, we have email so copy and paste it here and here right here email okay let me zoom in so in order so that you can be able to see it more appropriately now I hope it is clearly visible to you okay email and then it is also required and the last thing we have is the address so address and it is also required okay now the next thing is let us build and run this application okay guys so you can see my custom annotations are displaying in front of me when I, when I go to some different template let's say on create template so you can identify there as well so customer phone password these all are the annotations so now what will happen when you refresh this model if I right click and click on the update model from database automatically these annotations will be removed so how can you how can you save these things let me show you first of all stop the application and in order to retain your information first of all copy these all properties and paste it on notepad here for sake of reference now let us come here in model.edmx uh, and right click and update model from database though I haven't updated anything on uh, not a single thing but I'm going to refresh it okay click finish again okay after refreshing save it and now after when it is saved successfully go to the customer CS again and you will you will see what is the problem then All right it's saying that uh, it, the files have been modified so it is a default message that appears every time when you refresh your uh, entity data, uh, data model okay so yes I wanted to reload everything if you press no uh, uh, still uh, everything will be reloaded and refreshed now go to the customer and you can see everything is removed I hope you have understood what is the problem now the resolution for this problem is you have to add some classes here let me close everything so that it is easily visible to you people so right click on your application and then add a new class here the name of the class should be let's say metadata any name you can specify is it's your choice I'm writing your metadata 
So this is my class. And inside this class, what I'm going to do, I'm removing this class. Though I have created the class with the name metadata.cs, but in this, I don't have any class right now. Okay, the first step. Let me zoom it in. Now close this. Okay, so what should I, what should I do here? The things that you have copied, you have to paste it there. Okay, so inside customers, copy these all. This is my original model class, and you can one 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 uh, one minute. You can copy the whole class here, copy, and paste it. Okay, so I have pasted my meta uh, my customer class inside my metadata class. Now what I will do, I am uh, renaming it to customer meta data and I am removing this partial from here. So this is my new separate class and inside this class I am removing these property identifiers. I am creating these variables. Okay. Now apply semicolon at the end of every variable that you have created and now go to your notepad and copy these annotations. Copy and paste it one by one before name you specify name and write control dot press control dot so that you can be able to add these things so same thing you have to paste copy and paste again and again from notepad this one and this is for phone and then for password come here and copy these things and paste it here before password similarly come here and paste it for email and then we have last thing that is address so copy the annotation and paste it I hope it is clear to everyone so guys what I have done I have simply created a new class with the name customer metadata similarly if you have multiple models let's say you have orders table also so you do the same thing right after this Okay, you, you do the same thing right after this class. You can add multiple classes within this, this single file and the file name is metadata. I hope it is clear to everyone. Same process will be repeated. If you do not understand still, I am repeating in front of you, copy it and paste it below. So the second class name will be, let's say order dot order metadata and the order fields should be inside this class. I hope it is clear to everyone. So let's continue. So right now I have only one class. Now the next step is how can you make this apply on your existing model that is coming from the entity framework. For that purpose you have to create another class by clicking on add and then class and here I am going to write the name partial. Whatever name you wish to add it is your choice partial classes okay? and then click add. Now a new class is created but remove this. And what you have to do now, you have to again copy the same thing that is this one. Copy the same thing from your original model and paste it here. And here remove everything. You don't need it. Simply add your class. Then one thing that you have to add here is the metadata imposition that is metadata type that the T should be capital and it is not in the list so press control dot and you can see the namespace is appearing metadata type I am explaining you in a while what I am what I am going to do and it is asking me the type of so the type of should be of customer metadata that you have created the class that you have just created in another file so what will happen guys the game is all about partial what does this partial keyword is doing this is a previous or a old concept. If you see inside your originally generated model, the class is coming with the keyword partial and partial means part. That means this is one part of the customer class. Okay, And this customer class is residing inside the physical file that is customer.cs. Okay? So you have created another class with the same name customer and it is also partial that means you have created a part of the similar class okay now you have two parts of the same class okay and this part is getting the things 
from this part customer metadata and what's inside the metadata here you can see all the annotations that you have applied okay though your original customer model does not have any annotation but your metadata class holds all the annotations on the variables with the same names with same data types and then you have created the customer class again with the attribute that is metadata type and it is picking up all the details that this class holds from customer metadata and apply it everything on the customer metadata okay on the customer model so now let us see and run this application my original model does not have any annotation okay let us start and see whether the annotations from that class are appearing or not all right guys so you can see though your model doesn't hold doesn't uh, is not holding any annotation but it it got the reference from the partial class that you have created i hope it is clear to everyone let me show you look and if you go inside your model uh, here the original class does not have any annotation so it is picking up the annotation from there from this part okay and this customer metadata is imposing directly on your customer partial class i hope it is clear to everyone so this is the way guys you can um, you can you can retain your annotations uh, when you are working with database first approach now if you wish to add another table what you can do you can simply copy that other table class model and paste it here and similarly in the partial class you can copy it and you can paste it below and change the name let's say you we have the order class and similarly you can copy this metadata and paste it here and right now uh, currently i don't have but copy this customer metadata and paste it here and here you can write order metadata let's say this is the demo uh, work that i am doing okay this is not original this order one so this is the second metadata class that i have created and here you what you can write order metadata i hope it is clear to everyone so similarly likewise you have as many number of tables you are adding here as many number of metadata and partial uh, you can say in partial class file you add those things i hope it is clear to everyone so that's all for today uh, do try this and if you do not understand anything please write me thank you so much take care allah hafiz